Good afternoon, everybody. Great crowd, but again, nobody likes sitting up in front. I don't know what the story is. If they're worried about getting spit on or the coaches get pretty animated. Uh, by the way, I appreciate everybody checking in. You saw the front signs when you came to the Hall of Fame and said, please check in. We're really worried about collecting our $5. Actually, no, that was for our athletes that are in here uh, doing registration over the next couple of days. So. Believe us, it wasn't us uh, being aggressive trying to collect your five dollars. But appreciate you coming. Great crowd on hand. Big week for the Hard Rockers. Football's back at home. Volleyball's at home. Soccer on the road again. But uh, a lot to get to. Cross country program just got done with the RMAC championship uh, as well. So we'll start though with volleyball. They were just at home this past week and back at home this weekend. Welcome head coach Doug Tavern. Uh, but I've had some people tell me that they, they're actually pretty capable. Um, 
I've watched a little bit of film so far. I haven't really drawn a conclusion yet. Uh, so uh, we'll, I'll know a lot more in the next couple days. But uh, again, the, the record's not great, so hopefully we'll take care of business and, and uh, uh, hopefully we get two wins this weekend. And uh, worst case scenario, we split and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, did you, uh, it's senior night on, fr on, on Saturday. We'll, we have four seniors that we're going to recognize. Uh, so, um, and it's family weekend, as I think everybody knows. It's Halloween. I'm sure it'll be a really interesting uh, environment for. Uh, but hopefully, we'll have a nice crowd and uh, kind of uh, have an enjoyable weekend. Um, did get some really nice news this week. We've got uh, three kids who are academic hall conference. Jenna Cruiser, who was our speaker last week, uh, uh, it was first. It is a, a first team academic hall conference and very well deserved. She's a, a high GPA kid. And, you guys that have been around her uh, know that she's very heavily involved in a lot of stuff academically. Uh, and then Michaela Reese and Emily Newton are both honorable mention academic all conference. Uh, and Jim's probably got a really good shot of being an academic all American, and uh, we'll see about the other two. But uh, always good to kind of put that together and uh, recognize those kids for doing uh, something pretty special. So uh, proud of them. Um, we, we've got uh, five matches left. We've got this weekend. We're on the road next week, and we got BH at home uh, two weeks from Thursday. So um, I hope for a great crowd there, and hope we we'll wind up the season on a good note. Uh, players are hanging in really well. Uh, it, it hasn't been the best season record-wise, but uh, they're still motivated, and, and um, every day in practice is a good day. I think they come in. Sometimes they're not real focused, but they're they're high energy, and, and um, uh, they're hanging in really well. So that's proud of them for doing that. And, uh, Pitch things up. Questions or anything? Yeah, a multiple choice question for you. It might tax you a little bit. A, deer, B, elk, C, horse. I ruled out horse. I, I don't think it's deer. I actually contacted the, the highway people to try to find out, and I don't know. They haven't told me anything. It was big. It, it wasn't. It wasn't a deer. It should have been an elephant. It, it was. I, I ruled that out too. It wasn't a deer, and I know it wasn't a horse. I, I just, I, I didn't think it was a horse. I said it looked like it was big enough to be a horse. Okay. There's a difference. Um, <laughs> it's been uh, I, for a long time. I don't know, but it's, it was big, and um, uh, I don't know. So, all right. Thank you. For those of those people that maybe didn't know what Doug and Tom were talking about, Doug's stories of the road with this team continue to be the gift that keeps on giving. There's a lot of stories. There's been a lot of tales from the road from Doug Tavern, the volleyball program. Uh, Steve Johnson's not here. He's out of town. So to talk about the RMAC championship on the cross country side, welcome up Jerry Schaefer. Thanks, Nate. Uh, the B team is uh, up to up on deck now, so uh, you'll have to bear with me. Uh, we did go to the RMAC Championships last weekend. It was in Alamosa, Colorado. Kind of a homecoming for me. I haven't been back for decades, probably. I drove across campus probably six, seven years ago, and, and it's even grown since then. So it's kind of fun. Uh, kind of fun to remember what falls were like in, in college. Uh, at 7,500 feet with clear blue skies and, and bright sun and the white peaks around us. It was, it was kind of a refreshing change to go back and see that again. And uh, So I enjoyed the weekend. I don't know about anybody else, but, but I had fun. Um, we did bring home a little bit of hardware to start with. Uh, uh, the Summit Award in the RMAC is, it goes to the, the top athlete at the championship competition. And last year, Travis Boos was the, the male Summit Award winner in the Cross Country Championship. And Travis repeated with that award this year, as well as uh, Libby Friesen, a sophomore uh, distance runner, achieved that award as well. So we had the top two academic athletes in the meet at the conference championship this last weekend. Um, Our women uh, did a really nice job. They finished 11th out of 16 teams. We were hoping to, to crack that top 10. We were close, but didn't quite get there. Um, 
Having said that, the, uh, the women did a really, really nice job racing. Um, Addie Stratmeyer, who I'll bring up in a little while, uh, led our team. She was 34th out of 124 athletes. Um, she picked off, I was counting, she picked off 26 places in the last half of the race. She was in 60th halfway through the race and, and pushed her way up to 34th. Did a really nice job. Um, also for us, I, I think the, who had an outstanding day was Brittany Wood, our fifth year senior, who will graduate in December. Uh, probably the best race of her career, and she finished third for us on the team. Uh, we're really excited with the kind of race she had. Seven of our nine women had career bests at the meet in the competition. Um, we had one, our eighth, eighth runner, um, or an and eighth runner was one second off of her career best for six kilometers, which is a little bit longer than the normal race we've been running. Um, the women had a pack time of a minute and seven seconds, and I think Steve's mentioned in cross country, you're always shooting for a pack time, your first through your fifth runner to be within a minute of each other. Um, Addie kind of blows that curve for us a little bit because she runs out up towards the front a little further, but uh, we had a minute seven pack time, which was phenomenal. And our second through fifth runners were 17 seconds apart. So Addie was about 40 seconds ahead of the rest of, of our number two runner. So they did do a great job of packing. Um, these ladies, are tremendous when it comes to getting the concept of team in cross country and, uh, and so they do a nice job of, of picking each other up during the race and, and helping each other along and, uh, and making it a team effort. So we were very pleased with the way they competed. The men also uh, had a good race. Uh, they did finish 14th out of 16 teams which was where they were rated in the preseason poll. Um, however, with the adversity the men have gone through this year with, I think all of our upperclassmen came in a little bit dinged up and injured and, and haven't been able to put in a full season of training but just getting better and stronger week by week. Um, we were pretty pleased with the performances that they put out there too. Uh, Cole Yolovich, our one of our fifth year seniors was uh, our first runner, the first time this season. We were hoping he'd be our first runner all season long, but. Uh, Cole had a great race. Uh, he finished 74th out of 122 runners. Um, he was followed by our two freshmen, Ashton Griff Grissom and Jacob Huber, who have been our number one and two all year long until the RMAC. Uh, and then we had two sophomores behind them, Dale Breck and uh, Jace Walker were rounded out our top five. The men actually did have a pack time of 43 seconds, so they did pack very well together and work very well together through, throughout the race. We just have to work in the, in the coming years at getting those young guys to pack a little further up in, in the race. So um, that's our goal, uh, that's their goal, and uh, that's what we're looking for from that bunch. Um, next race is the uh, Central Region, South Central Region District Championship. We have to travel to Canyon, Texas, which is about 20 miles south of Amarillo. We were there two years ago. It's a, it's a dry, dusty course with one little hill that the guys go up a couple of times and then the guys and ladies both finish slightly uphill. So the, the plus to that is I think they're 3,600 feet, which means it's virtually the same elevation as here. So our kids are gonna enjoy that and it's, it's virtually a flat course. Um, we're excited to see what we can do the South Central includes the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference, the Heartland Conference, and the Lone Star Conference. So um, we'll double the field size of our conference championship and uh, we'll see probably two or three better teams, uh, um, not quite the depth of the conference that we're in. So, um, you know, we, we should finish pretty well there and uh, we're looking forward to that in uh, a week from Saturday. So. I'd like to bring up Addie Stratmeyer now, and um, we'll let you uh, ask her all the questions uh, that you want as soon as she introduces herself.
was the only one to run, you know, I'd be good at it. But it was also like my future. I had to think about my future and like what's gonna happen after college and I knew that this would be the best school to go to for after college and my future. So um, I don't know. It's really nice here. I love it. The team is awesome. Like, I have my best friends on the team, it's great. So any questions I guess? <laughs> Where are you from? I've lived in Rapid City my whole life here. <laughs> I love it. It's awesome. <laughs> I know. Any other questions for you? You guys seem to be a pretty tight knit group. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about, you know, what type of things you guys do or how, how are you so tight like that? Um, we're all really goofy with each other. Like we're not afraid to like be ourselves. And that's what I love a lot because, you know, everyone needs people that they can be themselves around, especially like in college and then they're all the same, we all have the same goal as like, you know, have fun in college and like be ourselves, but also we all want to study and we all want to get our work done and so we get good grades and such. It's like we help each other with school and like best friends, so I think that's really important. I don't know. The other girls, they're kind of goofy. We just like sing on the bus or like we had a snowball fight at our last meet, so that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> like, I don't know, I was walking out of the gas station and all of a sudden everyone's like, having solo fights and then I wasn't really, I was like, oh, I don't really want to get in this and then I got hit in the face. So, I mean, I might as well just <laughs> throw a snowball and so that's a good fight. <laughs> so, we're all together, so that's the best part. Oh. Are you going with the elevation? Um, last year, I was a little more injured so I noticed it a lot more and I was really scared about it this time too, for sure. I, I was kind of Big break. Um, and I guess a lot of it is I learned to stay more calm and then that kind of helps not like it helps me to keep my mind off of it. It's like okay just stay calm so I don't like start breathing faster or something. So I mean I definitely felt it that's for sure. My lungs are definitely hurting afterwards but I guess I just tried to keep my mind off it because I knew that was what was going to get me that was going to be my downfall if I focused on it. So I just tried to keep it calm enough, really, I guess. So. Daddy, how many miles on average how many miles have been um, I'm in the lower mileage group just because I know, like, Coach is really good about that. He um, is really, like, pays attention to us individually, and so with this lower mileage group and a higher mileage group, and I want to say we put in probably, like, 50 miles a week, I think, the lower group might, I think, and then the higher group probably does, like, 55, 60, just a little bit more miles every day, like, one or two more than us, so as of. Nothing too crazy. Okay. <laughs> Did you get to the gator farm? Did you get to the gator farm? You drove past the gator okay, farm. Oh, I heard about that. Oh, yeah. Wait, you should have done that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
four zero on that one. Um, just didn't, overall, just didn't play well. And none of our guys, we, we just didn't show up. And the, the challenge that Coach Conniff and I have moving forward with that is to figure out what, what can we do to ensure that our guys aren't aren't as inconsistent as we are. We, you can expect a game or two here and there, but us going, it's pretty much been 50-50 split, playing our game really well, and then you know, playing the next game more. So I think that's our challenge in the offseason is really make sure that every day in training uh, that we're showing up and putting, putting our best effort forward. So this weekend, we uh, I think we have the same schedule as volleyball. We play in Cargo Mesa and Westminster. So Cargo Mesa, uh, they put it to us pretty well uh, earlier in the season. We lost five to them. They're they're a really good team. I think they've lost one or two games in conference and maybe <coughs> four games all year. So it'll be a tough one. Uh, and Westminster, they're they're in a bit of the same situation we are. They have one win um, and a tie in conference. So if we, if we can get a game this weekend, I think that won't be it. Uh, and love a, a situation where I think basketball had last year would ended on a. So that'd be a great way to end our season. Uh, I think it'd be a good momentum builder going into the off season or we'll uh, work the guys pretty hard. So any questions? I guess I should also mention that we had three guys make the first team all conference as well. Uh, I think two of those guys had the highest GPAs in the conference. Uh, Brandon Lynn, Eric Fenske, uh, chemical engineering major, and uh, mechanical engineering major that 3.98 and 3.96 GPA. So, um, and the other one was uh, Darren James is around 3.8 as well. They might have been the three highest in the conference, to be honest. But they uh, congratulations to them and the hard work and passion pays off. So, questions? Thank you. Did you lose anybody coming back next year, or how's your? We'll lose two seniors. Uh, Mike McGraw, who, uh, at the end of the season, will be our leading goal scorer, uh, career leading goal scorer. Uh, he'll hold the record in most points in a season, uh, most goals in the game. So he's a big target, a uh, big guy up front, which we'll, uh, we're trying to replace him with our recruiting class. But uh, the other one is Sam Latent, who is one of our team captains this year, so we'll miss his leadership on the field. But uh, the better part, we're returning uh, 29 guys. We'll be the roster next year.
Thanks, Coach. Uh, last but not least, we always save him for, well, sometimes he's gone first, but mostly last. Football head coach Stacy Collins. Hard Rockers are back at home against Dixie State. Welcome on Stacey. coming out today. Uh, tough one down in Azusa. We certainly didn't play our best football, uh, and that's a good football team to play. So give them credit for what they did. Uh, didn't start things out well early, on, especially from a special team standpoint, which is disappointing on my end. I, I'm a special teams coordinator, and we spent a lot of time on it. We had a chance to block a punt early. Didn't do it. They turned around and blocked one on us, and we take a lot of pride in that game. And had some other issues throughout. Um, they had a really good tailback and, and quarterback, and both those guys did a good job on us. Had some opportunities couple long down and distances they got some things out moved the ball real well offensively but just you know we were only four for eight in the red zone we've been really good in the red zone here for a long time so it seemed like one of those nights where things were going our way and, and it was one thing after another and like I said credit to the opponent they're a good football team and uh, we need to regroup and our kids have had two really good days of practices and get ready for Dixie State. Azusa Pacific are players of the game uh, Trent McKinney and, and Zach Huber are pickaxe players of the game they both played Played coming into the week injured, and they both played really well uh, on Saturday. Our offensive player of the game was Sam Cowan up front. Sam did a great job for us. And our defensive player of the game was David Jackport. David's been done a really nice job in defensive end. I think we've got a few cuts here from the game, Brett. This first cut is Anthony Wright. Anthony uh, has came in, and uh, we've had, had some injuries at running back, so Anthony's worked his way up and did a really nice job. He's from the Southern California area, and he runs extremely hard. So it's good to see Anthony get in the end zone here. Um, and did, did a nice job running the football, mixed in with the pass, and, and had a lot of success moving the football on Saturday night. But it was good to see Anthony run hard. He played real well, and looking forward to watching these, these final three games to continue to develop and get better. Uh, this next touchdown was Trent. And again, I thought Trent, Trent played extremely well. You know, not only is he accurate throwing the football, but very mobile running the football. Uh, does a great job making some guys miss and getting in the end zone right there. And this last one is also another one of Trent's touchdowns. Again, we're doing some doing some stuff going out the back door with it. Trent making three guys miss and, and using his athleticism and, and very explosive player for us and, and excited to watch him finish up the senior year. That's actually Jake right there. I apologize. Uh, with Trent being hurt, Jake took a lot of snaps for us and, and again Jake did a great job and, and and it's hard to tell the difference between them running the football at times because they both both do great. So that's nice, a nice weapon to have as we get going on that end. Uh, this Saturday, uh, you know, trunk retreat at, at the stadium. We're playing Dixie State from St. George, Utah. Uh, this is a good football team. It's very, you know, when you look at the GNAC and, and you watch people go back and forth, this is a very, very good football team. Uh, they got another good running back. Seems like each week we see a pretty talented running back, but that's high end Division II football. Uh, so I, and they had a, bit, oh, a bye week last week. I think it's the fourth team we've played. It's had a bye week uh, before they played us. So it's kind of a unique situation. <laughs> so don't ask me why. Um, maybe we'll leave, them, leave them to the RMAC the GNX and here you go. But uh, um, no, I was just kidding on that. But but uh, they'll be rolling into town. And it'll be, be, be a good, good game to watch. Any questions I can answer for you uh, from the Azusa Pacific game or the Dixie State game? What are the keys to the game this weekend? You know, we got to do a better job stopping the run, Joel. That, that, that's a big one. We've got to do a better job stopping the run. And we're going to, it looks like we're going to get both our, our older defensive tackles who have been out the last three weeks back. So we're excited about that. So looking to get clearance on Christian Chavez uh, with them, hopefully tomorrow on that piece. And we've missed Christian for the last three weeks. And then Kyle Hudson, who, who should be back also. That, that, I think, will help a ton. You know, we've had some guys that stepped up inside. Those guys had size and strength. And, a lot of experience. So that that should help a lot on that piece. Uh, offensively, you know, when you continue to move the football, do what we're doing, put the ball in the, in the end zone, and we got to play better on special teams. It's been an area where we've been pretty solid. We fell apart last week and got to get back on track with that, changing the field position, putting points on the board, and making explosive plays. On the, the video on Saturday night, the view was uh, the stands behind the hard rock bench. There's lots of folks there. Were those Hard Rocker fans? Yeah, we had a lot of Hard Rocker fans there. You know, I think we have 
Well, I couldn't say the exact number. We're in the 20s, the kids from, uh, you know, players from Southern California, or not just Southern California, but California. We also have a large contingent from Arizona, and that's not far away, you know, four or five hour drive from there. So we have a huge group of parents there. Yeah, very, very, very good following. Did you get to do something with them after the game a little bit? Not so much after, you know, that morning up before we start our, our pregame meal and practice that a lot of the parents were around, and some of them watched us practice Friday night. After the game, you know, we and we had to head over. We stayed at Rabbi LAX and got up early the next morning. But those guys certainly got a chance to see their families, and it was one of those games. I know our, our California kids and Arizona kids, you know, their parents excited to get a chance to watch them play. Yeah. This late in the season, do you switch it because there's so many films out on you? Do you yes. Switch up things off. I mean, you do bring in new tweaks and stuff. Offensively, you just stick with what you got. Well, I think you look at each opponent, and, and you always have your tweaks off of that. I think it's important to have the foundation of who and what you are in all three phases. But yeah, you know that's your job, you know, to, to scheme and, and and try to find the niche that you have. When when I was actually coaching the GNAC in the past, it was stuff that you played everybody twice, and that's a whole different beast. And some of those teams are still doing that. With us, you only play them once, so it's probably not as much need to, to change. But you certainly want to find that you know what can we do schematically that fits. You know what they're doing on, on both sides, of, all three sides of you know three phases of the game. So we're always going to have some tweaks and turns. And a lot of it is, hey, what players do we have available? You know, everybody going into week nine, some guys are banged up, beat up, and you know it's been one of those years for us. I think there's been 12 stars for us that are out. So from from where we started. Um, so, but again, everybody's got that issue with injury comes opportunity, and so we'll, I think our coaches have done a good job of putting our guys in the best situations. How many seniors are? Going to be leaving the team? Well, that's a good question because what's happened with about three of them is we thought they were going to be seniors and they've, they've had season end injuries. So now we got a, we got a handful. Of, in fact, I talked to Jen this morning on some medical redshirt pieces on that. So I think we're at 16, you know, <laughs> uh, but I think we were, we're going to be in that 1920 range initially. And four of them were, are going to end up playing next year, whether they didn't even step on the field this year or early on. So we're right in that range. Yeah. Well, again, thanks everybody for coming out. I appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Before I let everybody go, a quick reminder here, you see it up on the screen. If you're in the ramps, you park in the ramps, try and bring some candy. We're going to have kids there dressed up in costumes. You don't have to give can all your candy to my kids, but they will be dressed up. They'll be ready to go. So bring kid, bring some candy in the ramps. We'll have trick-or-treat throughout the ramps. You get in free. Tell all the uh, friends that you know about it. Bring their kids. They get in free. should be fun for Halloween. Uh, quick note, the basketball programs we mentioned a little bit, uh, Coach Henry and the men head out to South Dakota State uh, for an exhibition game tomorrow, and Coach Larson and the women go to Utah State uh, for a game out there this weekend, an exhibition game, and then uh, basketball season will be here before we know it. So come out and support the volleyball program. They're at home Friday night at 7, Saturday night at 7, and of course the football game at home 1 o'clock at O'Hara Stadium. Thanks everybody. Thanks to Lynch Brothers. Great lunch today. Uh, we'll see you next week.